And welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Faith and Victory Church. So glad to have you all tonight. And uh, we continue each and every day to rejoice at how good God is, how good his blessing, how, how wonderful his blessings are in our lives, and uh, just as good to be alive in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to continue to remind you to be uh, with us live on Sundays as we uh, meet in person. So thankful to New Life Family Church for allowing us to use their facility while ours is closed. And um, we uh, don't know when they're going to reopen, but we're we're just grateful we have a place to meet. Praise the Lord. So 1230s on Sundays, uh, New Life Family Church in High Point. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Um, and then join us every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock for our virtual um, midweek Bible study. And um, if you're interested in joining us for our prayer service on Tuesday nights, email the, uh, us at office at fbc.org. We'll send you an invitation. It's, um, it's open, but it's by invitation. Um, and so we send out a um, Zoom meeting email. <coughs> you log in and come right on the end to the meeting, our prayer time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We've been sharing over the past few weeks um, along the lines of confession, our words, the role they play in our life in the kingdom of God. Um, and it, it's, it's good to be reminded that words are central to the kingdom. It is the great confession. Confession of Jesus as our Lord. Confessing what God's word says. Um, God created all things by the law of Genesis. And God said, and God said, and God said, and God said. Um, and he in, in turn created us as verbal creative beings and when we speak the word of God in faith we are using God's creative power to bring to pass what God spoke hallelujah glory to God so if you haven't been with us you need to, that was that wasn't even a, a, a synopsis of everything we've covered uh, over the past oh four or five weeks I would encourage you to go back uh, go to our Facebook page and um, look at those services and uh, they're dated. You can look at them and um, be, catch up here and, and be where we've, we've covered this material. It'll be a blessing to you. Glory to God. We, um, we talked about last week um, the four things that happen with the woman in the issue of blood over in Mark's gospel. And it's also recorded in Matthew's. But Mark chapter 5. Um, with the woman with the issue of blood, how she received her healing. Uh, she said it, she did it, she received it, and then she testified about it. She told Jesus, praise the Lord. And then we moved into talking about Jesus being the high priest of our confession. He watches over our words as our high priest. Glory to God. And he is our high priest, praise God. And we finished up last week with this, this thought, uh, goods are the results of our faith. God does not meet our needs with goods. He meets our needs with, with seed, the seed of words. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Which produces whatever it is we have need of. Praise God. And we, we reference 1 Kings 17, 13. Um, the prophet Elijah calls on the meal of um, the, the barrel of meal and the uh, vat of oil not to uh, expire for a whole year after taking care of the prophet of God. Let's look in tonight uh, about scriptures along the lines of speaking and our lifestyle. Uh, first looking at uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. It says, among whom also we had our conversation. Now, conversation is old King James, or I like to call it King Jimmy. Elizabethan English. Um, in, in times past, in the I mean, lifestyle, your manner of life. So, among whom we also had our manner of life in, in times past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Notice that they fulfilled the children of wrath, fulfilled the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Hallelujah. So important, as we've talked about in this series, <clears throat> Changing the way we think. Having our minds renewed to the word of God. 
so that our mind is a spiritual and not a carnal mind. Paul's, Paul's um, um, you really could call it a dissertation, uh, in Romans 6 through 8, deals a lot um, with the flesh versus the spirit. Um, you know, uh, talk about the body of sin, and he talks about that we've been delivered from that. So the great three chapters there. And of course, chapter 7, I like to call it the schizophrenic chapter. Because it's, it's Paul saying, you know, there's a, what he really says is the, there's a battle that goes on between the spirit and the flesh. There's a battle that goes on between the spirit and the flesh. <clears throat> and he addresses that in, in, these, in this, these chapters, how that the carnal mind is enmity against God. And so we must renew our minds to the word of God um, to bring our mind so that it, we no longer fulfill the lust of the flesh and of the mind. We fulfill the desires of the spirit and of the mind that are the mind that's been reborn, been renewed and is now uh, a spiritual mind. Hallelujah. <clears throat> uh, Matt, Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Uh, we, we have, we pick up Mark eleven twenty three 23 after um, I think Mark 10, Mark 12 where uh, 11, 12, where Jesus is going by and he curses the fig tree. If you remember the story, he, uh, he, he was a hungry, looked, saw far off a fig tree with leaves and he came upon it. Um, if, if happily or by chance, there might be figs, but found none. He said, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And the disciples heard it. <clears throat> and they go on the way and they come back the next. The Bible says that on the morrow as they pass by, Peter called in remembrance, uh, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree thou curses withered away. And Jesus answering, Mark 20, uh, 11, 22, and saith unto him, have faith in God. And we've, we've talked about this before. This, the, the, the article there in the, in the Greek construct can be translated, have faith in God or have the faith of God. <clears throat> and so what he really said there, he, because he goes on and teach, and the reason I say he wasn't just faith in God is because it goes on and teaches us how to operate the faith. So he's telling us how to operate the faith of God. Verse 23 says, For verily I say unto you that whosoever, now we like at our church, we like to have everybody raise their hand when, they, when we hear the word whosoever, because whosoever means me. Amen? If you raise your hand, it means you. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, to be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe the things which he saith shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, Mark 20, 11, 24, I say unto you, <clears throat> what things shall ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now, again, the Greek word for ask or pray, for pray in verse 24, is the same word uh, translated ask in James 4, 6, you have not because you ask not. Hallelujah. And so, Aitio, uh, A-I-T-E-O, is translated pray or ask. So really, Mark eleven twenty four should would, would be in line with the context is what he's talking about. What things soever you desire when you ask, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Because this is the context of faith. The context of biblical faith, the biblical, uh, the biblical confession of faith, hallelujah, that you ask and receive by faith. Paul wrote to the church and said, uh, according as it, you know, we have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, um, they, uh, we believe, therefore have we spoken, we also believe. And therefore speak. So he says the spirit of faith is faith is believing and speaking. Believing and speaking. That is the spirit of faith. That's how faith works. Is you speak what you believe. And, it, and the, where we get our believing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. So faith is birthed out of the word of God. Amen. Well, what is the word of God? The word of God is the will of God. Amen. You know, um, we say this and we say it and we say it and we say it. And, and our desire is if we say it enough, somebody's going to hear it and get it. 
so often the church has gotten religious when it comes to prayer and asking God for things that uh, they think the only way to pray is, Lord, if it be thy will, heal my body. Yet the Bible doesn't say to say, if it be thy will. Actually, if you study the ministry of Jesus, the only place he asked, if it be thy will, and he said, you know, if, um, if there's any other way that this cup pass from me, <clears throat> nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. The only place. It was in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was submitting to the will of the Father to go to the cross. And his prayer was, if there's any other way to do this, but not my will, your will be done. When it comes to healing, when it comes to being saved, when it comes to the things the Word of God promises us, we don't pray if it be thy will. How, why? Because the Word of God has already told us. If the Word of God's already told us uh, that he wants us to have it, <clears throat> then we already know his will. And if we already know his will, we don't ask, have to ask him that if it is his will, do it. What are we demonstrating? We're demonstrating a lack of faith or a lack of knowledge of the word of God. Now, a lack of knowledge of the word of God will, by default, produce unbelief. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the default is going to be, if you don't have the word of God coming in, then faith isn't coming in. Therefore, you're going to default to unbelief. That is the course of this world. It is an antichrist, uh, it is an antichrist system. And so we must adhere to the things the word teaches us, and that is to renew our mind with the word so that faith comes, so that our mind uh, is, is in line with the word of God, our thinking is, that our spirits will be able to reach out by faith because the, word, the entrance of thy word giveth light, the psalmist said. It giveth understanding to the simple. How do, I always like that because that means even folks like me can get it. Hallelujah. <clears throat> There's a lot of smart folks out there, but the Bible says it gives understanding to the simple. I can get it. Hallelujah, because his word gives light. It gives understanding. Praise God. Now, y'all could have laughed at that one out there in um, virtual land. That's okay. Um, amen. <clears throat> so, Jesus says, have the faith of God. And then he goes, up and says, for verily I say unto you. Now, verily was a word of a solemn oath, a, a, a sacred declaration. I solemnly tell you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Now, we've talked about this before, but it bears repeating. The mountain is not talking about going out to you know, the Himalayas and putting Everest in the ocean. Okay? That's not what it's talking about. It was symbolic. The word of God was using it as a symbol of a seemingly insurmountable Obstacle. Are you here? Um, when, you, when you run up on a mountain, and uh, <clears throat> as I've shared before, at, at Mount San Jacinto out in California, we, you know, outside of Palm Springs and um, um, Palm, um, Rancho Mirage uh, right there, you, you're at about 200 feet above sea level at, at the base, but you go up to 10,800. Hallelujah. On a two-mile aerial tram, you can do it or you can drive your car around. We took the tram up. My wife will never, ever do it again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, I thought it was kind of cool. She will never do it again. Oh, my. Anyway. <clears throat> you got, she got the button that says he'll never do it again. She bought a button. I'll never do it again. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, it's a seemingly insurmountable object. And that's why Jesus used the term mountain. If you say into this mountain, the mountains in your life, the things that seem insurmountable, you know, the debt, the disease, the um, circumstances of life, he's saying that no matter what it is, if you'll speak to that. Now, remember, we're talking about faith. He said, have the faith of God. That means that we need scripture or Bible to support what we're saying. Hallelujah. 
<clears throat> not just going out here and, you know, you can use the power of positive thinking. We're talking about the power of God's word released in faith. Hallelujah. Which means heaven stands behind it. Glory be to God. But whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed to be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart. See, there's no room for doubt. The Bible says of Abraham, and Abraham being fully persuaded that what he was what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Fully persuaded. I'm going to tell you, folks. You know, remember that the king told Paul, the King Agrippa. After Paul ministered, uh, witnessed to him, in, in, in basically an a, 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 a impromptu trial, he said, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I wish not on, only almost, but all together. Because he knew it took all together. All, all come fully persuaded to be able to believe. Hallelujah. Because doubt will rob you of receiving the blessings of God and the promises of God. But shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe. So we're removing doubt, and we're exercising believing. Now, believing uh, is the verb form of, of faith in the Greek. Uh, it comes from the, you know, we, we got the pastio. And, um, <clears throat> and so we're talking about the you know, believe. Believing is, is the Greek verb form uh, that we translate faith. Hallelujah. That power, that work, if, but shall believe in his heart. You see, faith is of the heart, not of your head. It operates in the spirit of man. Like one guy said, you can have, you know, um, when the man came to Jesus and Jesus said, you know, uh, he, he's going to cast the devil out of his son or whatever. And, and, the, and the man says, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. What he was saying was, Lord, I believe it. My head's giving me a fit. <clears throat> and yet we can have that. That's why we're to renew our minds to the word of God, to calm our minds down and get it in cooperation with our spirit. Because our spirit wants to believe. The, the church, we call people in the church believers. Now, the problem is we got a bunch of unbelieving believers in the kingdom of God. They don't believe the Bible. They believe on Jesus. They're born again, but they don't believe anything the Bible says about, you know, if you, you know, he promised to heal you, he promised to bless you, promised to prosper you, he promised all these promises. I think there's over 30,000 promises in the Bible. How many of you even got through 10 or 12? 30,000. Hallelujah. Um, <clears throat> but shall believe, listen to this, the things which he saith, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So if you say it, believe that what you said will happen, you'll have what you said. Now you've heard, you may have heard people say this, this phrase, you can have what you say. And that is a simplified version of a broader statement. And sometimes when people, you know, take a, a catchphrase or whatever and don't study it, and listen, a lot of times we'll use catchphrases to get people's attention, to arrest them, to get them to listen. But the catchphrase isn't the whole thing. Amen. Because what Jesus said first was, you've got to say it. You can't doubt. You have to believe that what you're saying will come to pass, and then you'll have what you say. So it's, it's a broader thing than just simply you can have what you say. Because if you don't take all the other with it, then what happens is people run off and start saying all kinds of stupid stuff. There's no basis for faith for. There's no Bible to support it. As a matter of fact, sometimes it's actually anti-Bible. It's opposite the Bible. I'm believing for that woman as my wife. Well, she's married. I'm still believing for her. The Bible says I can have what I say. It doesn't say it that way. You've got to have faith. And there's no basis for faith to have somebody else's wife. As a matter of fact, you're, 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 you're re reprimanded and reproved and rebuked for saying something like that or, or wanting something like that. Now, you can say, amen, owe me, or help me, Jesus. I don't care. It's the truth. Okay? 
You can have what you say when what you say is in line with God's word. I'm going to say it again. You can have what you say when what you say is in line with God's word. <coughs> it has to be measured against the counsel of the word of God, the whole counsel. Not just something you pull out of the air and uh, go after because you think it's pretty cool. Amen? All right. So here we find that in dealing with um, speaking about life, we got to say what we believe, and what we believe comes from the Word of God. Romans 12, 2, we talked about this, I believe, Sunday. Maybe, you know, we, we get talking on these lines. You can't, some scriptures you just can't get away from. Romans 12, 2, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. We shared, we've shared it before. How that the word conform means to be molded or shaped. Don't be molded. Don't be shaped. Don't be fashioned. One of the, one of the, uh, trans, one of the definitions is according to the world. So don't let the world system and the world's way pour you into the mold of the world. Well, what is the mold of the world? Unbelief. The mold of the world is to believe what you see. It doesn't, it doesn't believe what you can't see. The mold of the world is to believe what you can taste, what you can hear, what you can smell. Not what you can't see, taste, hear, or smell. The mold of the world is to be moved by your senses. I won't believe it unless I can see it. And it takes no belief to believe what you see. Hello. Now, the reality is some people b will believe that FedEx is delivering a package because they got an email that says they were, but won't believe the Bible that says they're healed and it says you were. Hello. Well, I don't have an amen corner in here, uh, but uh, it's true anyhow. Yeah. Are you here? Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. As we said this before, transform means, comes from metamorphosis, the metamorphosis of the mind, the renewing of the mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing. Renewing means to renovate, to restore. In other words, have you ever renovated anything? You clear it out, you tear all the junk, and you build it back new. You build it back right. Hallelujah. And you do that with your mind through the word of God. By renewing your mind that you may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. So he says here when we renew our mind, we can prove out the will of God. Now that messes up a lot of theology that says you never know what the Lord's going to do. You just don't know. I have not seen Ear hath not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Do you know he goes on and says that same passage, but we have the mind of Christ? <laughs> Hallelujah. Where is that, guys? Is that Romans? Somebody got out their concordance? Because it's not my notes. Yeah. They'll quote that all day long. You can't ever know what God's going to do. Just don't know. He might and he might not. Probably won't. 1 Corinthians 2 1. 2 9. All right. 1 Corinthians 2 9. At least I got the dog shouting amen. It ain't going to work as 1 Corinthians 7 9, I can tell you that. We 
which is where I was. But as it is written, I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither is in into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by a spirit. Hallelujah. Okay, I got another verse mixed into this. Um, but God has revealed them to us by a spirit. The spirit that searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. Are you here? You're gone home. The spirit of God reveals them to us. Now, we get sermons all the time. On, I have not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered in, and leave people that you can't ever know what God's going to do. And then he comes right back and says, but God's revealed them to us. It would help us to read a little bit longer than just the part that, you know, Grandma said, and we believe just because Grandmama said it. Find me the mind of Christ scripture. Mm-hmm. We have the mind of Christ. Glory to God. But he hath revealed. See, God's written word reveals his will. Now, I know there's been a many a, a, a funeral preached and a, and a many a sermon preached. How that, you know, God didn't want to heal them. He needed them in heaven. And we have no Bible for it. We do have Bible. God wants you well. By his stripes, you were healed. Verse 16. Verse 16 okay. It is the same passage. Down here further down. I, did, I thought it was closer. Um, verse 16 of second, 1 Corinthians 2. Before, before, who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now, all you can really say about that is, Wow. So the next time you hear somebody going off, and I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither is it into the heart of man. Um, go ahead and get your Bible. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and find the but so they don't take any faith out of you because the Spirit reveals his will to us. He's the teacher. He teaches us, he teaches us the word. The word unveils it. And, you know, and people always use half scriptures to make points. Let's use the whole thing. You know? Who hath known the mind of the Lord that we may um, instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. you always got people who are trying to take faith out of people. I want you to have faith. I want you to believe the word of God. I want you to speak it in faith. I don't want you to conform to the world. I want you to conform to the Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. I want you to be able to look at the circumstances of life and say, I got an answer for that. And it comes out of God's word. And he gets the glory. He gets the praise. He gets the honor. But you're able to overcome. What did 1 John uh, say? Whatsoever is born of God, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith faith overcomes faith wins faith defeats the circumstances hallelujah if you're born of God, you're born to be an overcomer. And the tool you use to overcome is faith. And where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What is the word of God? The word of God is the will of God. Faith begins where the will of God is known. And when you study the Bible, say, well, I don't know where all the scriptures are. I'm telling you, you got downloads of software now the i think one of the best free downloads out there for bible um for for concordances and having the greek having a strong uh, concordance where you can run to it right off the bat uh is esword.com or dot net 
It's e hyphen sword s w o r d dot net. Free download. <clears throat> you get the King James. You get the King James with the Strong's uh, Strong's Concordance numbers, which gives you the definitions for the Greek word. Um, there's no excuse anymore. You know, and let's face it. If you don't want to, don't use a computer. You can go to. A, you can order it online. Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible. It's about this big and about that thick. Has every word in the Bible listed. You can search by word, and every scripture that word is used is listed um, in there. You can find everything you want to find. What's that now? The Blue Letter Bible app's another app. Okay, I like eSword. I guess my kids like Blue Letter. My wife likes blue letter. Well, <clears throat> put a free concordance on your phone, too. Well, there you have it, folks. East Sword has the free concordance, too. I'm an old dog. Huh? Uh, I got East Sword on mine, on my phone. You can get East Sword on your phone. There's an app for East Sword. They try and make it out like you got to have a PC. Nope, I got eSword on my phone. I'm winning this battle because I'm the big dog. All right. <laughs> oh, for our French friends out there, je suis le grand chien. Hallelujah. All right. So, but see, again, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. See, God did not design you to fail. He designed you to overcome. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Glory to God. How does faith work? Back to Mark 11. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass, <clears throat> he shall have whatsoever he saith whosoever shall have whatsoever if he does not doubt but believes what he says about it glory to God I said glory be to God can somebody else say amen out there amen so what do you do I mean if you're fighting sickness you go fine and that's why I say get a concordance you uh, one of these uh, Bible apps well, you can find these scriptures quickly and list them, write them down um, because you can start putting stuff in there and searching it out and find Isaiah 53 where it says um, that uh, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. 1 Peter 2.24 says he, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we be in dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Matthew 8, 16. Um, and when evil was come, they brought unto him many that were sick and possessed, and he, he healed the sick and cast out the spirits with his word, that it might be fulfilled by that which was spoken of the prophet Isaiah. Himself took our infirmities and carried our sicknesses. Now, tying all that together means Peter is the New Testament confirmation of a, a completed task of a prophecy from Isaiah concerning a future event. Peter confirms the fulfillment of that prophecy in Jesus Christ and that by his stripes we were healed. Matthew makes it clear it was referring to physical sicknesses and diseases. And then you find other scriptures. Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And that the prayer of faith and the anointing of all. Hallelujah. Shall heal or shall save the sick, King James says. But again, that's sozo. Sozo is translated save, healed, made whole, restored, uh, delivered. It has that full meaning of salvation embedded in, 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 into it. And so it really should be, uh, and, and, and the uh, prayer of faith shall save or heal the sick. Amen. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Sozo, so born again, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be healed, whosoever ca calls the name of the Lord shall be delivered, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be preserved, hallelujah, because that's sozo, that's what it means, all of that, glory to God, amen, 
uh, Peter, First Peter 3, 1 says, um, Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your husbands, that if you obey not the word, that also may uh, without the word be won by the conversation of the wives, lifestyle. While you behold your chaste conversation, lifestyle, coupled with fear. And it's, we're talking about the, the, our words and, and, and our um, creating a, how we live. See, we're to live a life of faith, a life separated to God. And we do that by speaking God's word. Our life can become a testimony to others because we're so full of the word and we speak the word that we actually act like the word is true. Now, for us believers, and some believers that I know, that might be a novel idea to act like it's true, but it is true. Amen? Let our lifestyle, let how we conduct ourselves testify of the reality of the living word working in us. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Forget not all of his benefits. Acts verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that's within me. Verse 2 goes on and says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know what verse 3 says? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Delivereth thy life from destruction. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Can you say amen? Amen. Uh, Y'all put the blue letter app out there and didn't put the e-sword out there? It's not free anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not free anymore. Cap wins. <laughs> there we have for having it. Y'all best not my sermon. All right. So here we have in Psalm 103, he healeth, he forgiveth all thine iniquities, healeth all thy diseases. See, we got Bible. We got Bible. God wants you healed. God wants you saved. God wants you delivered. There's all kinds of promises that God wants for you. But the way you get them to operate and work in your life is to believe the word and speak it. Amen. We have to put the word first. The word of God must be first. Matthew 6, 24. Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink. Yet for your body, what you put on it. And is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, uh, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather also uh, into barns, but your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, worry, see, taking thoughts, worry. Worry is meditating on unbelief. Can add one cubit to a statue. And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. No, they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. See, when we begin to worry about things not happening for us, we're in unbelief. When he says, oh, you have little faith, he's calling them unbelief. He's saying they're, they're, they're out of faith. Um, Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. When you are a kingdom person, you're living according to the word, you're speaking the word, you're doing the word, you're acting on the word, you're meditating on the word. Your speech will become different. The things that you say will become different. Even like Peter by hanging around Jesus for three years, his speech betrayed him. He no longer talked like a crusty old fisherman. 
Oh, you're one of them. Thy speech doth betray thee. And I can tell you, being a crusty old fisherman was not a good thing. But his, you, you, the, the way you talk changes when you're getting full of faith. You can't speak the negativity of the world. I remember when the coronavirus first came out, I, I, test, I just set up and said, I am a virus kill zone because the plague does not come nigh my dwelling. It may try to come and get on you, but it can't. It just can't function there. It's got to die. It can't survive. Hallelujah. Amen. And the problem is that the, they, they stirred this thing up so bad that we got everybody afraid. Everybody's going to talk about it. They're afraid they're going to get the corona. The corona's going to get them. The corona's going to get on them. You know, i got to wear this mask. If you really love everybody, you'll wear your mask and they'll wear theirs. You want to stop the corona? Speak the Bible. The plague does not come nigh me. The plague has no power over me. I'm the healed of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus overcomes the law of sin and death. It Anything of the, uh, of the kingdom of darkness, anything of the kingdom of Satan operates under the law of sin and death, and it has no power over me. Hallelujah. I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. I said amen. We got to stay full of faith. We got to speak our faith. Walk our faith. Live our faith. Can you say amen? Well, maybe y'all can see them. Okay, I got them coming up. The thumbs ups are coming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, um, we appreciate you being with us during this time. Trust you got, got blessed um, out of our teaching tonight. And, um, you know, it's, it's just always good to break the bread of life together. Amen. And um, listen, if the Word of God challenges you, if what we say challenges you, let it challenge you. Amen. But I've always believed it this way. Okay. But if the Word of God shows that the way you've always believed it's not right, you need to, you need to let go. Um, minister, Brother Hagin, a number of years ago, was in a church. He tells a story, or used to tell a story. Uh, Dad Hague has been home with the Lord for a number of years now. Um, <clears throat> but he went to a church, and um, he was holding two services a day, one in the morning, one at night. Morning, he was teaching on faith. At night, they were uh, preaching and then laying hands on the sick. And um, as, as going on, and, and, and in that day, the traveling minister most of the time would stay in the, in the parsonage with the, with the, with the uh, pastor's family. They had a room they would use, and they would stay there. And... Um, you know, and one day um, he was he came. The wife had breakfast for him, and the husband had gone left to go do errands. And uh, she said, uh, "Brother, hey, I need for you to talk to my husband. He needs what you're preaching. He needs to hear what you're preaching." And um, um, he said, "Yeah, I know it, but I, but I I've tried to talk to him. He won't come to these morning services. He come to these morning services to help him." And um, he said, but I'll talk to him. And um, so he, he got him aside later on that day and said, you know, um, you know, brother, you really need to be in these services. They'll, they'll help you. They'll help your faith. And um, he said, yeah, I know it. But if I did that, I'd have to admit that you're right and I'm wrong and I'm just not going to do that. He said, okay, I'm closing the meeting down. There's no need to preach it in a church where the pastor is going to undermine what you were saying. And uh, so he went to the next church and he told that pastor, now, he, he did operate as a prophet. And he said, that pastor fall dead in this pulpit one week from Sunday. And sure enough, a week later, in his pulpit at preacher, he fell dead. Didn't have to. He wasn't willing to admit. See, he had made up his mind that he was right about something and wasn't willing to let the word change him. We can't live our lives not willing to let the word change us. We have to let the word change us. 
Can you say amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, on that note, that, that positive note, hallelujah, uh, I'll leave you with a solemn note of let the word change you. Let the word change you. Amen? <clears throat> Have you got the graphics ready? We're going to go ahead and receive tonight's uh, virtual offering. If you can give through PayPal, through your uh, cash app, you can go ahead and get that ready. Uh, the information on how to do that is going to come up on your screen. Um, and then we're going to pray, glory to God, and that uh, you can give to the, to the work of God here at Faith and Victory Church and um, be a blessing to what we're doing for the kingdom of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless the people as they tithe and as they give. We thank you that heaven's windows are open unto them and you pour out blessings on them that they do not have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, we sure love you here at Faith and Victory Church. We're thankful for you. And we'll go ahead and quote one of the scriptures as our, on our close that we quoted earlier tonight. For 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Good night. God bless you. See you again here at Faith and Victory Church online.